What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So today we're going to talk all about the tricep push down. And I am going to show you how to squeeze every single ounce out of this exercise to get the best impact of it. Because I know a lot of people are doing the exercise and I got to tell you, a lot of people are making some big mistakes when it comes to it. We're going to break down from the anatomy of everything that's going on in the elbow and actually in the shoulder as well to perform this exercise. And I'm going to show you why the little things matter where the position of your elbows in relation to your side and what that happens to do to the effectiveness of the exercise and where your hands should be in relation to your body when you're doing the push down and the fact that your wrist and the placement of your wrist will actually have a key component in terms of maximizing the effects that you see from this and also when we're talking about the wrist and the positioning of our arms and our forearms what's happening here when we supinate or pronate our forearms are we getting a different impact on the triceps themselves. I want to cover all that here today because I'm telling you guys if you add all these things up it's going to make this exercise a home run for you every single time that you do it. Okay so what we want to start with is actually the position of the hands in relation to the body during a press down. It doesn't matter which implement you are using at the moment because what we want to talk about even with the straight bar here is what, how close are you to the machine. Some guys will get up right up on top of it like this. Some guys will be a little bit further away here and still others will actually be away from it and when they press down their hands are actually out in front of their body. You've probably seen all three but which one is right and which one should you be doing? Well it actually it depends. The fact is that when you get up on top of the body here the first thing that you're doing is you're actually letting the triceps rest because a lot of us will get our hands up in this position near our chin and this is not really placing a lot of t uh, tension on the triceps because we know that in order for this to have the most tension we want this line, the line here of the cable to be perpendicular to our forearms. So that would mean if we're going to get really close to it that we want to have our hands starting at about waist level to actually have tension on the triceps and then we would go from there so the range of motion would go from here to here. Whereas we know if we could take a little step back to here we know that we could still be now a little bit more perpendicular to our forearms at a higher point, now more closer to our chest. So we'd go through here and we'd have a little bit more range of motion on the triceps in that position. But we also realized that if we went a little bit too far out away from our body now the arms just by virtue of being too far away are going to have to drift and as soon as the elbows drift away in order to get this down and back we are going to probably initiate here with the lats and by initiating with the lats it's not necessarily what we're trying to do if we're trying to get the most of the work done by the triceps. Now I've talked about a position here where we can actually do a rowing push down but that's really to cheat the concentric portion of it to overload the eccentric on the long head on the way back up. But that's not what we're doing here. We're doing a traditional push down. So you have two options. You can either take that midpoint that we talked about which would be hitting a longer range of motion and still getting the effectiveness of the exercise without compromising too far or too close or you could do the rock and tricep push down which is an exercise that I covered in depth. I'll show you what the video that we covered it in looks like here and I want you to watch it when this video is over. I'm going to make sure I link it at the very end. That will show you how to get the most out of that exercise from the beginning to the end by changing the position of your body in relation to that by using this line of resistance and keeping it as perpendicular to your form throughout the exercise as we possibly can. But now with that covered, now I want to move on and start talking about the positioning of the elbows and how far how much drift we're going to allow before we don't want to have that anymore. Okay, so now we're talking about the elbow positioning. What you want to make sure you're not doing is allowing your elbows to start drifting so much that it starts to put you into this position. We call this the jackhammer push down. And it's not a good thing. And you know, I'm sure you've seen guys do this all the time. They get up here, they load the weight up, right, and they're pushing down just like this. And that's their jackhammer push. They look like they're operating a jackhammer. The reason why you can use so much more weight to do that is because you're not doing a push down anymore. What you've done is by getting your arms here instantly rotated and elbows out and now getting up on top of it is you've actually created a scenario where you're doing a standing dip. Right? Because now what we're doing is if I were to take this and push down there's no difference than if I were to actually do like a straight bar dip or even a dip where I have my hands in closer. Now I'm activating the chest a lot to actually complete the exercise and we're no longer letting the triceps do the bulk of the work. So if you want to do this right, what you want to do is you want the opposite. You don't want the elbows flaring, you want the elbows held nice and tight to the body. And by virtue of even doing that, you're going to get more long head involvement that, that crosses the, uh, the, the shoulder joint and attaches to the shoulder blade that will actually want you to be adducted and have your elbows in tight. So here's the best way to do that. You want to go for an elbows tight, hands wide position as far apart as you can. So hands like this, as wide on the bar as you can, 
elbows as tight as you can. You can almost pull apart on the bar here and keep the elbows tucked in this way, and that's going to keep you in this position right here. Okay, so we're not allowing the drift of that. We're keeping it in tight, which now focuses all the movement on that arc of this extension and flexion here of the elbow, which is going to maximize the work of the triceps. Okay, the next interesting thing is whether or not it even matters whether or not you're doing an overhand pronated grip pushdown or an underhand grip. And a lot of guys will swear that when they're doing the underhand grip, they feel the long head of the tricep way back in here contracting with much more intensity. And others will say, it doesn't even matter. And if you look at the science and the anatomy there, at first glance you would say, it doesn't matter. Because here's what's actually happening. Look at here the bones of the elbow. And really if you look down a little bit lower, you're looking at the bones of the forearm here. You have the ulna and the radius. Now, the ulna is actually the part of the lower forearm that is hinging on the humerus to create the elbow joint. And that is the bone that the triceps all commonly come together and attach to. So that means that, that if that something happens to the ulna there, then yes, you can, you can argue that there will be a difference or an impact on what's happening with the triceps. However, the radius is what creates supination and pronation of the forearm. The radius will roll over the ulna to create pronation or supination here at the forearm. But the radius and the radial ulnar joint does not impact what's going on to the ulna itself, meaning that pronation and supination at the elbow should not have any impact at all on the effect on the triceps. But here's what happens. It actually does, because we don't operate in a vacuum. We have a joint that's actually connected by virtue of being part of our arm to our shoulder through a kinetic chain. That means that when we do things down here, we tend to do things up here as well. And what I will show you is that when I get here into this position and I go into a pronated position, right? What happens usually when, I, when I'm in this pronated position is my elbows have the tendency to want to drift a little bit away from the body. Even if I try to pin them as much as I can, you can do this without a bar in your hand, you'll see that it's a lot harder to get your elbows pinned tight to your body and even back into extension and keeping them tight at the same time if you have your forearms pronated. When I go underhand though, if I'm in this position, when I go underhand into supination, all of a sudden those elbows will also come in. It's much easier to get my elbows tucked into adduction here at my side and actually back behind my body to get that long head into full contraction by having my hands in this underhand position. So it has nothing to do with what's actually going on at the forearm, but more of what the repercussions of changing the orientation of your forearm will have on your ability to keep your shoulders in the right position to get into a better activation zone for the long head of the triceps. So that is why those that do this exercise and feel like they can, especially if they're doing a one-handed version of it, where they can get their arm back behind their body, that's what you're feeling. You're feeling a better activation of the long head because of that, but not really because of what's actually anatomically happening here at the forearm. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit low here so I can explain this next one for you. We want to talk about the positioning of the wrist, and that actually means what type of implement we're going to use. Is a straight bar the best thing you can use, or do you want to use more of an angled V bar or ropes in order to better hit the tricep? And I can tell you this, that the straight bar is going to create limitations, especially if you are somebody that has wrist issues, because here's what happens. If we were to get into the tricep push down here and we were to go into perform the extra exercise, one thing we don't want to happen is we don't want overactivation of the wrist flexors to actually perform the exercise, because that means we're taking away from the work of the triceps. We get it down to about here, triceps can't do anymore, and then the wrist flexors try to cheat it all the way down. We don't want that. So some people even recommend actually just hooking fingers on here and getting into extension and pushing down that way so that when I'm down into full position here, you can see that my wrists are into extension. But what I'm focusing now on is making all the work happen through the triceps just by having elbow extension. Here's what happens though. When we're in this extended position of our wrists, and you can do this yourself, just lift your wrists up like that. Now what happens is when you go into full extension, you'll see that your hands will actually angle a little bit more towards your thumb. Right? They're almost like turning up this way, right? If I go into extension, they're not flat, they're actually angling towards the thumb side here. So radial deviation is a component motion of extension of the wrist. So we want that. Well, if I take my hands now, which want to be here, again, extended like this, and then up into this angle of radial deviation, if I force that down to get flat, right, to hold on to a straight bar, you know what's going to happen? 
likely you're not going to allow it to hurt your wrist anymore. Or if you have a wrist restriction, to keep pushing and pushing and pushing. What's going to happen is this. If I can't keep my elbows in here, and now I'm in this position here, and I want to turn them down, and I can't get them down anymore, what's going to happen? I'll cheat them down by just going like this with my elbows. So if my elbows come out, then I'll, actually, you know, I'll, I'll act like I'm actually getting more of this downward position in my hands to grab the straight bar. But what I've done is I've just gotten myself into that same issue we just covered, which is the, the positioning of the elbows too far away from the body. So you want to make sure that you're aware of the fact that your wrists are going to be a key component of how you do the exercise. And if that means using a straight bar or using a rope to get into a position where your hands can actually be a little bit angled up, then that's what you should do. All right, guys, and finally we bring it all home here with asking you the question of what are you actually trying to train? What area of your triceps are you actually trying to train? Are you trying to train the lateral and medial head on the outside of your elbow here, or are you trying to train that long head of the triceps, that meteor area on the underside here closest to your side? Because you actually have the opportunity to do that, and how you perform the exercise will actually help you to get more or less from any of those heads. Here's what we want to understand, though. The two on the outside, the lateral head and the medial head, all they do is extend the elbow. Because they don't have an attachment over the shoulder onto the shoulder blade, then it doesn't matter what else is going on. Only what's happening is how much extension you have at the elbow or not. So if you were to do the exercise, kind of go back to the beginning of the, uh, the video that we talked about, let's say you're going to do the exercise and have it out in front of you and just do this. Now let's say we're not allowing the elbows to move, so we're not worried about overactivation of the lats. We're just talking about extension and then flexion. Extension and flexion. You could hit preferentially hit those two areas of the triceps better by performing the exercise that way. But if you wanted to hit the long head, you could actually do that too. Because you know, the long head exercises aren't always the things that put the elbows in the long head of the triceps in stretch. We also have to consider the fact that the long head can be placed in a position where it can have a stronger contraction by getting it into its fully contracted position, which means close to the body and back behind our body. And we can actually do that if we make some changes in what we're doing here. So the first thing I would say is it's pretty difficult to use a straight bar to do that. We already talked about the, the wrist limitations of that. But even if I went underhand, as I said, it's a little easier to get back there, but you still hit your body with the bar. So right away, if I was trying to get more long head contraction here, or a stronger long head contraction, I'd want to maybe go to a rope. But here's the thing with the rope. I'm still going to have the same issue when I come down here. Yes, I can get my arms tight and behind my body, but I'm going to wind up hitting my body here if the rope's not long enough. So what I always recommend in this position, in this case, is to have access to something really long. So now here, my buddy Smitty Diesel with his straps here, we actually have access to something much longer. So again, it doesn't matter what you use, just want to make sure you have something much longer than a regular rope. So now look what happens. If I get in this position here, my elbows are tight and behind my body, look what I can do now. I can get way back behind my body with my hands into full extension because the rope is going to allow me that excursion. And I can actually turn this push down into almost a standing tricep kickback, which we know is going to hit the long head of the triceps into that contracted range. So the fact is, guys, have a game plan in an area of what you're trying to accomplish, and you'll be able to do it as long as you're now armed with the knowledge of knowing how to attack the tricep push down. And again, there's a lot you can do with this exercise, there's a lot you can get out of this exercise, but it's really helpful to understand all of your options and the best way to do it. So I hope we just did that for you in this one video. In the meantime, if you're looking for a training program that pays attention to the details because they matter, guys. Our anatomy is our anatomy for a reason. It sets us up to perform in a specific way that we can operate at our best. And if you apply that to every one of your workouts and the exercises that you do, you'll be amazed at how much more you get out of your workouts. And that's what we try to accomplish with our Athletics training systems. They're all available over at athletics.com. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Let me know what else you want me to cover, and I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys, see you soon.